Hello, and welcome to Lesson 3. I am your host, Dr. Wendy Bingham of Extra Pelvic Not Rare. Today's lesson answers the question, where has endometriosis been found in the body? Let's head inside and begin. Before we begin Lesson 3, I'd like to highlight the contents of Lessons 1 and 2. For those who've not seen these lessons, please visit our homepage at extrapelvicnotrare.org. They can also be found on our IGTV and YouTube channels of the same name. In Lesson 1, we introduced our nonprofit organization, Extra Pelvic Not Rare. To learn more about our mission and objectives, please visit our website. We also clarified the locations of pelvic and extra pelvic endometriosis. In Lesson 2, we explored factors that impact the ability to determine if extrapelvic endometriosis is as rare as traditionally perceived. We explored the impact of medical education, clinical experience, research, and documentation deficiencies on awareness of body-wide disease potential, thus understanding of endometriosis in its entirety. Endometriosis lesions have been identified in each of the 11 major body systems. The only system not included here involves the sensory organs of sight, smell, hearing, touch, and taste. Evidence of endometriosis has been documented among all 11 major body systems. Case reports are not limited to cis females. Episodes of disease are also reported among transgender persons and cis males. Further, among these populations, Disease location has been recorded at both pelvic and extrapelvic locations. Before we take a detailed look at each body system, there are two important facts viewers must be aware of. The first, it is common for symptoms of endometriosis to mimic other more common diseases that are occurring in the respective body system. Dependent upon which body system that endometriosis is located, the rise and fall of symptoms around the menstrual period known as catamenial, is a unique characteristics which can be helpful to guide providers in their differential diagnoses. For some, their symptoms may have initially presented as catamenial, but as disease progress, symptoms may progress to menses and ovulation and possibly throughout the entire month, but rise and fall. Last, it is important to also note that not all endometriosis in extra pelvic body systems have a catamenial feature. For example, endometriosis lesions occurring with inside the liver body. Second, the viewer will see a wide range of locations and body parts where disease has been identified. However, many of these locations have been reported in a single or handful of cases only. Other locations and body systems are reported regularly and have a wide range of frequencies. As we move through the lessons, Focus on those body systems in which disease is more frequently observed will be explored in greater detail. Endometriosis has been identified in all eight organs of the digestive system. The most frequent location is within the intestinal tract, particularly the large intestine. Over two dozen reports of liver body lesions within fewer reported episodes of the small intestine, mesentery, pancreas, stomach, gallbladder, and esophagus. Here, we identify muscles of the abdominal wall, pelvic girdle, and legs where lesions have been identified. We have listed 14 of these locations here. Note, the muscles of the pelvic floor are not pictured or included here. Lesions of the pelvic floor are more commonly involved in the musculoskeletal system, however, their involvement is not usually a primary topic of articles being published. The integumentary system is also known as the cutaneous system or skin. The most common locations of skin endometriosis occur among the layers of the abdominal wall and groin. Very infrequently, it also occurs of the external genitalia area and isolated cases of the eyelid, chest, and fingertip have been reported. Unique to endometriosis of the skin is that the lesions can be categorized as primary or secondary endometriosis. Primary endometriosis occurs on skin without a prior history of surgery. Secondary endometriosis is lesions that occur on or near proximity to prior incision sites. 
incision sites such as a prior C-section, a laparotomy, um, use of the umbilical port for laparoscopy, and also episiotomies. We have identified four locations within the skeletal system that have evolved endometriosis lesions. Their depth of penetration have ranged between the outer surface, of, known as the periosteum, to deeper penetration of the cortical and intermedullary canal. The lymphatic system helps to remove particles of infection, injury, and foreign debris from the body. It also aids the circulatory system with homeostasis. There are over 800 lymph nodes found throughout the body. These are interconnected by vessels and identified by their immediate locations clumped in regions. There are 16 regions identified. Endometriosis has been found in six of these regions. Two other organs play a vital role in the lymphatic system, the spleen and thymus. To our knowledge, there are no documented occurrences of endometriosis of the spleen. This is most curious. As there are many theories of origins for endometriosis, the distribution through lymphatic and vascular distribution is among them. The nervous system is comprised of both the central and the peripheral systems. Endometriosis has been identified in both of these. It is important to clarify that lesions in areas of the central nervous system have been reported in single or very few occurrences. These areas include the brain, brainstem and cerebellum, and at the inferior end, the cota medullaris and the cauda equina. Lesions of the peripheral nervous system include the lumbar and sacral nerve roots, their respective nerve plexus, and the peripheral nerves. Though still infrequently reported in scientific literature, involvement of these structures primarily occur within the pelvis and multiple episodes documented. However, no tracking is established at this time to determine its true prevalence. The urinary system is currently accepted as the second most common location of extrapelvic endometriosis. As mentioned in lesson two, there is no global comprehensive reporting system accessible to all healthcare providers to report endometriosis in all areas of the body. Specific to the urinary system, disease of the bladder is most frequently reported, lesser among the ureters and infrequently the kidneys and urethra. Although we will discuss in greater detail serious concerns of the urinary system in future lessons, we'd like to state now that 50 to 75% of all ureter disease is asymptomatic. And in addition to this, the ureters lie retroperitoneal in the pelvic cavity. Thus, to directly observe disease of the ureters requires extra dissective procedures that do not occur during regular laparoscopy. With its proximity to the urinary excretory system, we chose to include the adrenal glands here on this slide. A handful of cases of adrenal gland endometriosis have been reported. Despite a lack of global and comprehensive recording system used by all healthcare providers, endometriosis of the respiratory system is often considered the third most frequent area of extrapelvic disease. This follows that of the digestive and urinary systems. The diaphragm is the most frequent area of the respiratory system involved. Lesions can occur on the abdominal side, the chest side, or can occur on both. In order of decreasing frequency, endometriosis lesions also occur in the chest cavity, as well as the lung tissue, followed by the airways. A few isolated reports of endometriosis as the nasal cavity and the trachea have been reported. All locations of disease highlighted in this lesson so far are considered extra pelvic. The final system of reproduction is where endometriosis lesions are found is considered pelvic. To learn more about these two categories of endometriosis, please refer to lesson one of this series. As identified in this slide, endometriosis lesions are found among all major organs and support structures of the female system. This also includes structures not included in the photo, the broad, round, and uterosacral ligaments. To our knowledge, the first published case report of endometriosis in a cis male occurred in 1971. 
Although the majority of cases to date, lesions have occurred in the reproductive organs, there have been a few reports of extra pelvic locations such as the abdominal wall, inguinal canal, and bladder. Endometriosis among cis males will be explored in greater detail in later lessons. Further information can also be found on our website. To summarize, endometriosis has been found in a lot of places. In fact, among all 11 major body systems. However, there is one major organ where there has been no documented cases, the spleen. Curious, as mentioned earlier, the spleen filters substances from the blood, playing a role in the circulatory and lymphatic systems. The absence of any splenic endometriosis reports should be applied to support or refute the theory of endometriosis distribution through the systems. The locations highlighted in this lesson is not a comprehensive, exhaustive list. The frequency of endometriosis identified at each location in this lesson range from single, isolated cases to a handful or one, two dozen, while others are reported on a regular basis, but in various degrees of frequency. It is likely unidentified locations and episodes of endometriosis are ongoing. Four factors which contribute to this include a lack of comprehensive recording system in use by all healthcare providers to record each episode, misdiagnosis and undiagnosis, inability to identify and locate intraoperatively, and dismissal of the person's concerns. Based upon the frequency of scientific publications, reported ranges of prevalence for disease among specific body systems, and the unscientific but important location of diseases discussed among our online support and education groups, we created an infographic in attempt to represent the whole disease of endometriosis. The reality is endometriosis is a disease which extends beyond the female reproductive organs and supportive structures. As such, to improve our understanding, open lines of research, and development of education and clinical skills across all healthcare disciplines, a full representation of the disease is vital. Please take a moment and conceptualize this. There's an estimated one in 10 cis females across the globe develop endometriosis. We've compiled 100 persons with endometriosis here. Are you able to visualize how many persons this would represent in your own local community? Now we take a deeper look at where their endometriosis affects them. We conclude lesson three with a question to all providers and practitioners. Would you know the signs and symptoms to look for? if endometriosis was present among the various body systems? To find out, tune in in future lessons as we delve deeper into disease among each body system. When we return, lesson four begins a series of deeper explorations with the disease history, presentation, assessment, and treatment considerations of the various locations of extrapelvic endometriosis. Our first stop will be the digestive system. Thank you for joining us for Lesson 3. I am your host, Dr. Wendy Bingham, wishing you all wellness until we meet again. Goodbye.